Martha Burke, thank you for being here to continue our discussion on how women can best inform themselves, most importantly, when they vote, and not just that, make their voices heard through the issues the candidates address. Now let's talk budgets this segment. Here's my first very simple question. What are the important differences between the party planks that you see when it comes to budgets and how they affect women? Oh, we need a couple hours on that one, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just tick through them real quick. Sure. Uh, the big thing, of course, we've already talked about Medicaid. The two parties differ greatly on that. Republicans want to turn it into a block grant and cut it 20% in the bargain, leaving the burden on states. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Democrats want to actually expand it, so that's huge, but we've talked about that. Medicare is very big. There are big differences. Uh, the Republicans are saying, well, Obama cut Medicare by $700 billion. What he did was slow the rate of growth and cut a, a subsidy of 14% out of these insurance company HMOs that are called Medicare Advantage. Ron's budget does the same thing but they just don't say that. Now, he got on TV and... Now, yeah, I'm so, just to stop you there, you yeah. blew by the name Ryan, we're talking about Paul Ryan, Paul vice presidential. Paul Ryan, the vice presidential candidate, yeah, the, uh, the whose budget is, it's now the Romney-Ryan budget, Ryan. but the whole blueprint mm -hmm. is Ryan's budget. It incorporates those same cuts, but what he didn't say when he said the Republicans were going to save Medicare, they're gonna save it by destroying it, turning it into a voucher program. Mm -hmm. So now, whereas your care is paid for, if you're on Medicare, you do have to buy supplemental policy under their plan, they're gonna give you a check, probably a lot less than it's gonna to take to buy care, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can go shopping and good luck. Right. Right. But here's the counter uh, uh, argument, so to speak. You hear this a lot. Aren't these programs due for a little trimming somehow to make them more healthy for the future for all of us? And, and maybe the question there is by how much? I mean, you, do you hear the president saying we do need, need Medicare and Medicaid? Well, before, sure. So. The president has said we need to slow the growth. Mm -hmm. I think, Gene, as a person who is on Medicare, mm -hmm. and I've personally seen this, we do way too many medical tests. Uh, it's defensive medicine. We need better overall planning among the different doctors and hospitals. That's been shown to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need some small adjustments. Do we need to completely destroy the program and turn it into a voucher system? Right. No, we don't need that. And where that affects women more is women are more dependent on Medicare. They have fewer help with, say, something from work that carries over into retirement. So they need it worse, they live longer, mm -hmm. and they're just more dependent on the program. Mm -hmm. Other parts of the budget that we, one might not think are impactful on women, I'm curious how you see this, there's a huge difference in, in military budgets that these folks are talking about. Mr. Mr. Romney, Governor Romney, wants to in fact increase everything and, and kind of puff up where, where our capacities are while the president wants to do a little bit different. Does that in, impact women budget decisions like that? Yes, it does. Okay. And the reason it does, Gene, is we know in our household budgeting, when you spend money on one thing, you have to take it away from something else. Mm -hmm. The Ryan Romney budget, takes about 20% out of most domestic programs. That's child care, mm -hmm. that's children's health insurance, that's women, infants, and children feeding program. Mm -hmm. All of those things are going to be cut more if the military budget is built up more. I see. And they say they're going to cut everybody's taxes by 20%. Mm -hmm. And how are they going to do that? Uh, we should talk about where are those savings going to come from. Right. If you ask, they say it, it's again, it's a secret plan. Right. They just say they're going to trim loopholes. Sure, but let me throw something right out at you that you know. There's also talk about cutting uh, money to faith-based programs, Planned Parenthood, a lot of the things that seem very impactful towards women. So again, when we're talking budget and slicing and dicing budget things, how? much in danger do you think these programs really would be if, if Mr. Romney in fact got the nomination, got the presidency? Would we in fact see Planned Parenthood just go away or do you feel like there's some what, little ground here? No, he has said he wants to see it go away. Yeah. Ryan has actually voted to defund it in the House. Romney hasn't had a chance to do that sure. yet. Do you think so, that would actually happen though? It yeah. depends, Gene. Yeah. If Congress goes Republican in both houses, absolutely. I see. I think it could happen in the first month. Wow. 
-hmm. They want to zero out Title X, which is family planning programs. And they're against abortion, but they want to wipe out a program that will prevent a lot of pregnancies, sure. therefore prevent some abortions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of where faith-based programs are right now? We heard it famously talked about um, George Bush back when his first term, he, he made an outreach effort to faith-based programs to solve some of our social ills. Where do we sit right now for women in faith-based programs? Are they, are, they, are they truly filling a gap here for women? Some of them are, yes. Uh, I have to say, and I don't agree with this, Gene, but it is a reality and has been for really a generation or more. The largest recipient of social program money from the United States government is the Catholic Church. Mm. So Catholic Social Services is a huge beneficiary of your tax dollars. That is why I resent so much when the Catholic Church starts to tell us we don't want to provide birth control in our insurance and we want to be able to discriminate on the basis of religion in hiring. So they can't have it both ways, although they want to. Sure. Thank you for talking about budget issues. This is always a big one, but it, like you said, we need two hours for this one alone. It's huge. But Martha Burke, thank you again. Author of Your Voice, Your Vote, The Savvy Woman's Guide to Power Politics and the Change We Need. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Gene. Excellent.